This is a, an all-time first. It's never happened. Um, because the, the speaker tonight, of all people, will be um, our beloved Guru Deva, the guru who founded the Hindu temple on Kauai, and who I was privileged to know and learn a lot from, and who's, uh, you know, whose grace is, is here. And uh, he just surprised me, to say the least, by suddenly showing himself and he said, don't I get to speak? <laughs> I was like, yes, of course you do. <laughs> it's never happened before, that's all. <laughs> of course he does. So uh, <laughs> I don't know what to expect. But anyway, that's who we're... That's what we're, what we're going to hear from tonight. Well, good evening. Good evening. I was so enjoying the view through the aura of Arthur that I had to have someone poke me in the ribs and say, say something. <laughs> Good evening. This is a unique experience, and yet one that we have all seen happen time and time again. My main purpose for coming this evening is twofold. First, to share a little bit about what's been happening with me, in case you hadn't noticed I died. <laughs> <laughs> and the other is to share a few simple yogic insights that I feel we all can benefit from. So I died. How was that? long, drawn out, not painful really, but different than I remembered it, for I've died many times, as have you. But the point in dying is that you realize that you don't die, that you step right through that doorway and after the pomp and ceremony is over, the well-wishers at all, then you really find that you are exactly as you were before. So, as one poet once said, death, where is thy sting? I didn't feel it.
if anything, think about this house and how it might look if suddenly, though the roof stayed intact, all the walls suddenly blow, were blown down. You could see into all the rooms. You could see, no doubt, if you looked through the uh, windows. And suddenly, there you were, seeing more than before. But you, essentially, were exactly the same. And this brings to mind a very potent point, I, I believe. And that is that death will not suddenly elevate you. Not at all. So whatever your elevation, it will be the same after you so-called die. The body drops, true enough, poor tired old thing, <laughs> mine in particular. I had starved it the last few days. But um, I was essentially the same, and I still am, though I have been able to avail myself of many of the blessed ones that are an addition to one's world, that is, if you're not accustomed to see them. And that did help. In other words, Though I myself was a guru while living in the physical dimension, I am the first to avail myself of gurus. I sought out every saint I could find and sat at his or her feet for as long as I could and as such received something of their darshan. And I was given to understand by uh, Yoga Swami, my own guru, that I was simultaneously somehow uh, shedding that darshan out to those who were looking to me for darshan. So it's a chain that we are all part of. Each one of you, there are no exceptions, certainly not in this room, and what of that? Well, it just goes to prove that you are who you are, wherever you are. And so, once we get past that uh, false expectation that you will suddenly become a saint or something when you die, then, of course, you start to think of your living as you would consider it in a different light. In other words, you want to just not wait. You don't want to put it off. Put what off? Your enlightenment. Your quest for enlightenment on a day to day and night to night level. And I make this observation for you because I notice that like so many people that I know some of you here are somehow waiting for you know the magic moment <laughs> that doesn't come except when you cause it to come and that is the point so here I am again. Thought you'd got rid of me, did you? <laughs> and I'm here to remind you that it will not be in the uh, physical world that you are likely to experience your realization. But in that world, you must seek out day after day, week after week, month after month. In other words, the climb up the mountain of consciousness is the same whether you are where I am or whether you are where you are. 
And I mean that very literally. So I am here to exhort you, all of you, to do a little more sadhana, do a little more effort in that area, if you would. And I speak as not a guru, but a friend. If you had a friend and he or she went somewhere you hadn't gone yet, and you wanted to know, well, I'm going, you know, in a month, so what can you You would appreciate some honesty, wouldn't you? It's cold and rainy there. Take a raincoat and hoax. You would like that. Instead of, oh, I had a wonderful vacation, that wouldn't be practically of as much use. So I'm here to tell you that before you die, you might want to turn up your living a bit, <laughs> spiritually speaking. <laughs> so that when you do die, you're really going for it. And dying will just be as a few weights dropping off the belt, so you can go for it a little faster. True, you do have more what appear to be hours time at your disposal. In fact, you have it all. You can do uh, pretty much anything you like, except that you will find that what you used to like, unless it was spiritual pursuit, isn't of much interest anymore. Because you can see through the physical uh, appearance of things, that is true. Like I mentioned, if the walls were down, you could see all the way through this house. So, I am here to say, if you're not meditating, you might consider it. You might consider that it's just important enough that you set aside some time to sit still, to calm yourself completely, to breathe deeply, and to go in and in and in. And then go in and in and in some more. And that this simple to some perhaps frivolous little exercise in concentration is more worthwhile than most of the things you might be doing otherwise. For you see, in this quest to find out who you are, which the external world can never really show you by its very nature, you would be gaining ground to actively seek that. But if you never do, when you get to where I am and there's nothing physical around you, then you would find yourself a bit disoriented. You see, because that is all that you have chosen to put your attention upon. So, I'm here to say that any time spent seeking your inner self would be the best time you could spend. And I suppose if I could give a spirit message tonight, that would be it. I am a spirit after all. <laughs> so that's a spirit message, isn't it? course, so are you. Now, the second uh, aspect of my coming tonight is indeed to give some spirit messages in the tradition of spiritualism. I always had a very healthy appreciation for spiritualism. Some of my best friends were mediums still are. And, uh, well, why else am I here? <laughs> I like you. 
mediums. <laughs> Most of you are mediums, as far as I can see. So, here would be my first spirit message. That there are several of you who have not really stretched in any of your bodies for too long a time. So let's begin by saying that physically you have not stretched your physical body in a long, long time. Some of you can't remember how long. Mm -hmm. And that it would do you a lot of good because as above, so below. And as you stretch your physical body, you will be having to first stretch in the spirit body or light body. For otherwise you'll never be able to move your physical body at all. So you see it becomes a simultaneous stretch. And I heartily suggest it. The next thing I would add to that is that some of you have not stretched yourselves emotionally and that would be by definition demonstrating mastery over an emotion that normally has mastery over you. That's a stretch, isn't it? For lots of you. And I would suggest that kind of stretching as well. If you are prone to impatience, then I heartily ask you to stretch your patience out. And it isn't just sitting there biting your lip. It is really, truly being as patient as you can be with effort applied. And to continue up the ladder, if you have not stretched yourselves intellectually, mentally. And by the way, some of you have stretched too much that way. <laughs> but for those of you who haven't, there's your next stretch. And what does that mean? Well, study something, learn something new. And it's not just reading a magazine. Take up a study of something worthwhile, I would think, and see what you can do about gathering information that has been researched about that thing and become knowledgeable about one more thing. It matters not whether it's something physical or something that you might call spiritual. They're all the same. And of course, spiritually, the stretch would occur in meditation. So for those of you who are not acquainted with meditation, I have left, I think, a good body of information on that. It shouldn't be too hard to locate. First, you want to have your attention in check, not this way, that way, in and out, up and down, like a little rubber ball, but holding it where you want it to be. And of course, once your attention is under your control again, you will find that you can begin to observe things again. I mean, really observe things, not just see life as a blur going by you. And then when you realize that you can observe, well then, you can enjoy the beauty of concentration. And only when you can concentrate will you be able to effectively meditate. You can't do it otherwise that I know of. 
meditation when persisted in to that state known as contemplation where you are tasting something like the mind of God, your God, fixed upon some aspect of itself, and you are part of that experience. You are experiencing that experience. And then, of course, when you think as God thinks, you naturally will go into samadhi. That state which proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are indeed God and God is nothing else but you. And that it would be known as self-realization. So this simple little formula can make all the difference when you die. I suggest it. I suggest that you drink more water as well. <laughs> that you breathe more deeply as well. That you stretch in all of your bodies. Just like a cat. Cats stretch daily, don't they? Several times a day. Mm -hmm. And they do it so well. Practice, I suppose. And then, doing your stretching in all of your bodies, you will find yourself naturally growing because you are causing that growth. You see, you come to see that the only growth that ever occurs or is likely to occur is the growth that you cause. We have, I think, on Earth, a rather mistaken view of that because we see children or adolescents growing, um, you might say, without their cooperation. They're growing, shooting up like weeds, they say, whether they want to or not, whether they notice it or not. They don't have to stretch to grow. They can't help but grow. But that is the way of nature's God when you are dealing with the physical body that is in the process of reaching for its own maturity. But once that maturity is attained, any further reaching or stretching or growth is completely optional and up to you. So have no illusions about it. Come to know that any growth that you are likely to experience or witness is and can only be a direct result of your efforts in any area. Otherwise, there is no growth. One of you is thinking, ah, Guru Deva, that sounds good but it somewhat contradicts what I've heard spoken of as the law of evolution. Someone said that by that law, supposedly a cosmic law, that things are evolving no matter what. Well, that is true. But you see, to realize that one is not growing is a form of evolution, isn't it? And to not grow because you are not doing anything to cause growth, when you finally realize that, is also evolution. So you see there is no discrepancy. I have come to find that the beauty of this truth is just that. If your growth is constantly in your own control, then what can stop you?
I'm here to emphasize that point tonight and I am very very grateful that you have had the patience no doubt a stretch for some to listen to me and I suppose I'll step off of my soapbox and wish you all a fond and blessed eternity Thank you. I am your friend Subramunya Swami As Guru Deva left, he said to me that um, he said, "Well, he said that wasn't that bad." <laughs> he goes, "Maybe I'll try it again sometime." <laughs> I said, "Okay, anytime." I don't mean to ignore you all, but I, I'm deeply pondering the points that he <coughs> brought up. When, when beings of, of uh, his, uh, I'll say caliber, uh, talk or anything, teach, they, whenever they express themselves, <coughs> they, I find that they, um, they don't just talk, they, they, they change things, they change um, everything. <laughs> everything. <coughs> some some of you might might uh, not feel that I don't know, but um, I sure do very intensely right now. It is just as he was using me mm -hmm. to do it because when they speak, they're not they're not just speaking. They're uh, being. You know, they're completely, it looks like they're talking if, if, you, if your eyes are only open to the physical dimension. It would just look like they're just talking, but they're doing much more than talking. They're, God, I don't even have a word for it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a word in Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Help me, somebody. Emanating? <laughs> emanating? <laughs> What's that? Emanating. Emanating would be a good one. Emanating, uh, and more than emanating. Emanating and... Um, Demonstrating. demonstrating is another one, yeah, and um, radiating, radiating, uh, radiating into the cells. There you go, there you go. That's good. That's a good one, exactly, exactly. They're penetrating. They're penetrated into matter. That's what they're doing. They're penetrating into this dimension of matter, and therefore they're changing it. He just changed this dimension by doing that, by saying that versus just words, you know, and I, I hope, I hope that, you know, that you felt that, because it's a, it's a very profound feeling. Um, I think the point that he made, which I sure took personally, was very potent about 
us having this, and I think that might come through maybe a lot of our religious background, especially if it wasn't Hindu, uh, th with this belief of the pie in the sky thing. You know, one day you'll die and go to heaven, kind of a thing. You know, and, and how what an illusion that is, what a lie that is, really. You know, it's completely untrue. Or at the moment of your so-called death, there is none. Except, like you said, what would you create? That's simple. And it is none other. There really isn't. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really getting that, like, really heavily right now. So it's going through me very much, <laughs> very intensely, very powerfully. I think there was an intravenous <laughs> yeah. rejection of that. <laughs> It, it's it's uh, it's the like a feeling of um, like don't fool yourself. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be any more beautiful there than it is here. You know, and the, therefore, how beautiful is it here? And uh, you know, that kind of thing. Very very interesting insights, to say the least. Needless to say, whatever. Again, beings like him speak. They do. They do radiate. They do emanate. Certainly, what what you know, of course, in India they know about. And it's called darshan. It's just a blessing that just goes out. Um, the blessing is this, though. To some people, it might seem a little strange. Um, it's like a quickening that you get anytime you're blessed enough to be in their presence, because that quickening in consciousness goes out and and like, how do I say? Um, it just might save you a lifetime or two. Do you know what that means? Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> it means a lot to me. <laughs> Considering what a lifetime means, you know, how much you have to go through. I don't know if any of you are having a real easy time of it out there. If you are, <laughs> show me how, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know one person that's just completely having a breeze of their life. Not one. And as a matter of fact, to speak very candidly, everyone I know is carrying a pretty heavy cross. Every single one of you. A pretty heavy cross. Every one of you. I don't know that there's one of you that isn't. If anything, I, to be honest, I psychically avert my glance because I don't want to, I, I can't bear to see the pain you're in. And I'm in too. I mean, you know, I'm not saying like I'm exempt, believe me. And so we just act like it isn't there, don't we? We just like ignore it or something like that, you know, but it is there. And it's there, of course, for a reason, and we're all choosing to bear it. So, you know, we, like we all need a good hand, you know, every one of us, you know, yeah. applause, you know. God bless us all. But the, the only reason I'm making a point of that is because so if somebody could, by just radiating or, or telling me something, avoid me a lifetime, another one, oh, <laughs> I'm all ears. I am all ears. I'm listening like never before because that's what happens. And that's why in India you see people doing this kind of thing to, you know, to people like that, to each other as well, but to people like that and, and highly revering them. You know, in the West people just don't understand that. The Western mind is so dense so dense, so insensitive, and so rude <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> and we're all Westerners here, but you know what? We're all that way, as far as I was a little bit, so more than others. <laughs> and it's just that, that thing of not being able to appreciate um, the intangible, basically. We need something that we can touch. We need something that we can taste, that we can chew, you know, something that we can whatever, you know. And uh, I think that's the point that we're all um, being pained into transcending. I think your pain grows until you are forced to release something that you're attached to that you don't need. And then out of the sheer pain, it's just too damn hot. You gotta drop it. <coughs> and then when you do, suddenly, oh, it's better. Now what was that? <laughs> and then you look to see whatever it was that maybe you were hanging on to it necessarily. You know, it's very interesting. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Anyway, um, um, there will be only one more message service at this location. Mm -hmm.
I understand a few weeks ago Miss Terry made the announcement rather prematurely <laughs> that there wouldn't be any more message services. She was right, just a little premature a few weeks ago. <laughs> but no, we, we <laughs> yeah. Uh, there will be only one more here. You know, we have them on the first and third Fridays, as you all know. Uh, there will only be one more in this location. And after that, uh, if you would, maybe you would uh, call Annie and, and ask her, and she'll know. She's over there. Of course, you, you don't see her anyway. Just call her number. 521 <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'll have to pay her more money just because for all the, all the inquiries that she's going to cover. We can put another message. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> or it'll be on a message machine. But you know, you'll, you'll all, you'll all, uh, you'll all catch it. Is it the first Friday of October? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 End of October, yeah. So uh, we'll let y'all know where the new, you know, the new barn is. You can meet. <laughs> <laughs> we can all meet there. Theoretically, you could do the third week of October. You have no ah. Unless you have no furniture here. Ah, that. not so. I don't think we're going to be too rushed. Not so. We don't want to rush it. Um, I'm I'm about ready to uh to just to you know call it a, a day or a night, but. Oddly enough, I, there are some messages I'm supposed to give that are not to you, 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 but just to, you know, you know, like I, I like to call them, if the shoe fits, wear it. You know, if it's for you, you'll know it. If not, just let it go over your head, and one, you're not the other. Okay, yeah, just a minute. I don't, I don't know what they are, but I'm being told that there are some. It's like, like almost like someone walked up with a little bag. What about these? These got to be given out. <laughs> okay. Okay. There are some of you in this room who recognize um, the name Babaji. It is to those of you who do not that this message is intended. Seek me, for I have already sought you. I have found you, now find me, that the blessings will flow and be complete. There are some of you here who feel that these would be the words I would attach to the, the, what I've seen. I know that I am not as, you know, as spiritual as, uh, as a lot of other people I know, and I know that there's things I do that distinctly are not right or or are incorrect in some way, and I know that. And um, that's just the way I am. <laughs> and to those of you who are thinking that, the message is this, that no, that is not how you are, that is how you have accepted that you are. <laughs> but if you really want to do yourself a favor, look a little more deeply and you find that you are really beyond that. Otherwise you wouldn't <coughs> notice that you're being that. You see? <coughs> so think about it. There are a couple of us here who are thinking of um, leaving a relationship that we're in because we feel that it's not going anywhere, and it isn't. <laughs> and yet we, um, you know, aren't uh, mo motivating ourselves to do that. And the message to that uh, state of mind is uh, to give thought to what Guru Deva said about the only growth or change that comes about is that which we cause. So if one is waiting to be motivated, you know, you'll wait a while. There is, there are two of you here who at your place of work, no, there's not two, there's four of you, that at your place of work 
you know that you've got to change something. And you, it is within your power to change it. You know this. And it makes you uncomfortable every day. But um, it hasn't dawned on you that, that it won't be until you change it that you'll feel how much better you'll feel. How much better you'll feel. Because if you could feel that even for a minute, you'd change it tomorrow or whatever the next time you're at work. So there is that that needs to be uh, seen. Oh. <laughs> oh, and there, there. Oh, this is a beautiful one. There is money available to. Gosh, I want to say everybody. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> Then hand it out, Art. Okay. <laughs> there, no. It, it's this is a message. I mean, it's coming as clear as day. It's just that I almost like can't believe it, but but, it, but it's true. I'm sure. This, it's this that um, that every one of us here, at least everyone in this room. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know that I'm speaking about humanity. I I'm not going that far. But it comes for everyone here. It's like for everyone. Uh, this that there is more money available to everyone here. You might say from the universal supply or whatever. It doesn't matter where it seems to come from. Um, but that y you haven't or we haven't um, like simply asked for it. It's like asking God, can I please have some more money? <laughs> you know, it's that simple. It's like you may have done that before and you got it before. But you haven't done it lately. And you need it and you should ask for it. Because it will be there right away. So that's a happy message. <laughs> and on that note, we'll end the evening. <laughs> no, really, that was the last one. That was the last one. So what an interesting message. So, uh, gosh, okay. Well, I guess that, that uh, concludes our evening. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh,